If you have unwanted hair, there are many legitimate temporary hair removal products and procedures available. However, if you want permanent hair removal, well, that's a different story altogether. Permanent means you have a procedure, and the unwanted hairs are gone forever. There are no topically applied creams or potions of any kind that can deliver permanent hair removal. And here's why. This video is about those permanent hair removal creams, those home remedies, those commercial hair inhibitors. Well, the quick answer is they don't work because they can't work. There is nothing you can rub on your skin that will permanently remove hair. Problem is, most people think that hairs represent a simple problem. After all, they're just hairs. So they believe the simple and quick solution for what they think is a simple problem. However, they soon discover that it's not a simple problem. Let's have a quick look at a few of the hundreds of home remedies and products that can be found on the internet. It seems like the main ingredients are baking soda, turmeric, lemon juice, papaya, salt, milk, and other household foodstuffs. You have to ask yourself, if those products worked, why are electrolysis and laser clinics still in business? Just rub it in and your hairs go away permanently. Yeah, sure. You never hear what those products are supposed to be doing. I mean, what's the science? What does papaya or ant oil do? What's it supposed to do? Of course, those promoting such products never offer an explanation. They say, just use it because it works. And they'll tell me to do research on the product. However, I don't have to do research because I know rub-on potions can't work. It would be like somebody telling me that if I drive my car fast enough, I'd be able to drive to the moon. Okay, here's why rub-on products of any kind cannot work to permanently eliminate hairs. First, let's identify the parts of the hair follicle that must be destroyed to cause permanent hair removal. The primary targets are the derma papilla and the entire lower follicle that contains stem cells. Stem cells grow the hair and the follicle. Electrologists and laser operators target the papilla and stem cells in the lower two-thirds of the hair follicle. If you destroy these stem cells, you get permanent hair removal. Electrologists and laser techs produce a thermal reaction in the follicle that destroys the stem cells and adjacent blood vessels by coagulating the tissue. It's basically a low-grade burn. By contrast, magic potions offer no explanation at all as to what's supposed to happen in the follicle. How do those creams destroy the stem cells? You just rub it in, and then what? But more importantly, and here's the main point, there is no topical application that can penetrate down into the follicle. Sure, you can slather on cream, but it's not going down into the follicle. The cream may slightly penetrate the dead outer layer of the epidermis and enter the little pore in the follicle, but no way will it penetrate to the depth of the follicle stem cells or the papilla. Follicles extend all the way down through the dermis and usually all the way down to the subdermis, the fat layer. Here's another illustration to better illustrate my point. I've colored the epidermis blue. This layer is your skin's outer barrier and it cannot be penetrated by creams or oils. Here is the tiny pore to the follicle called the infundibulum. I've colored this tiny pore red. Here's a photomicrograph of the follicle opening, and I've colored that red too. The infundibulum allows sebum to flow out of the follicle, and it's usually filled with dead skin cells, as seen in this photograph. From this point down, it is physically impossible to push any product down into the follicle. There is no way any cream, potion, or inhibitor can penetrate down into the follicle to the location of the stem cells and papilla. It's impossible. 
The hair shaft is locked to the follicle wall, and nothing can enter, no matter how hard you rub. Here's something to think about. If liquids could enter the follicle, have you ever had to empty the water out of your follicles after a bath or a swim? Probably not. You can't rub water down into the follicle, and you can't rub any cosmetic product down into the follicle either. Okay, so now the potion promoters say, wax out the hairs and rub the potion down into the empty follicles. Of course, they don't bother to explain what it does or to actually get into the empty follicles. Nevertheless, they're still wrong. You can't rub anything down into the waxed out follicles because they're not empty open holes. This drawing will illustrate the point. Here's a drawing of a hair and follicle. The potion promoters think that when you pluck out a hair, the follicle remains open. So they assume you can rub the potion into an empty hole. This is not the case. When a hair is plucked out, it immediately collapses and is filled with blood. When you tear out a hair, you also tear blood vessels. Here's a man who had his chest hair waxed. The area is bright red because thousands of blood vessels were ripped open as hairs were torn from the follicles. Immediately, when the follicle bleeds, blood factors close off the wound, and a tiny scab forms over the follicle. Although you seldom see bleeding or scab formation, it always happens, even with tiny hairs. So, the point. You cannot rub potion down into a tweezed out follicle. It won't work. There is no open hole, not even for a second. No hole and no potion in the follicle. Okay, even though the lotions and potions can't get down into the hair follicles, for a moment, Let's assume that they can. Now, the promoters have another problem. We know that in order to cause permanent hair removal, the stem cells and papilla have to be incapacitated. That means tissue has to be coagulated and destroyed. How, then, do the lotions and potions accomplish this without causing pain? You can't destroy tissue without causing pain. Laser and electrolysis treatments cause pain, because both modalities destroy tissue. If you think about it, our hairs are really part of our sensory system. In this case, our sense of touch. Even the smallest hairs provide a greater sense of touch. Have you ever had a bug walk on your skin? You felt it immediately. Well, that's one reason we have hairs. Hairs are sensory structures. Hairs help protect us from unwanted invaders. In these drawings, you see follicles surrounded by highly sensitive nerve endings. In this photo, you see nerves located at the base of a hair follicle. Actually, hairs should be considered sensory organs. You can experiment yourself. Gently start to touch your arm, and notice that you feel the touch before even contacting your skin. Yes, even the tiniest hairs are sensory organs. So if you're using a lotion or potion for permanent hair removal, how are you going to eradicate the stem cells in the papilla without causing pain? The simple answer, you can't do it. So what have we got so far? To cause permanent hair removal, you must destroy the papilla and stem cells. Laser and electrolysis accomplish this, by desiccating stem cells in the follicles. Potions offer no scientific explanation. They don't tell us what the products are supposed to do. They offer no legitimate science. Hairs are sensory organs. Destroying follicles causes pain. If you don't feel anything, it's because nothing's happening. Potions cannot penetrate down into the follicle so, any explanation is pointless. Potions cannot penetrate the follicle, even if the hair has been tweezed out. So, in conclusion, we have rub-on products with no explanation that can't get down into the follicle anyway. However, there are chemicals that can penetrate the skin barrier. Just touching certain plants or animals 
can cause adverse skin reactions, even death. In the past, there were health and beauty products that unintentionally crossed the skin barrier and caused serious health problems. Can you imagine that lead, arsenic, and even radioactive radium were put in cosmetic products? Today, there are many medications that benefit us by penetrating the skin barrier. Here's a list of a few of these medications. Most electrologists are familiar with LMX or EMLA. These are lidocaine-based creams that penetrate the skin and cause temporary local anesthesia. However, in every case, and here's the point, whether a poison plant, a poison frog, poison chemicals, or beneficial medications, all these chemicals cannot differentiate. These chemicals cannot specifically affect a hair follicle only. Instead, all of these penetrating substances enter the bloodstream and can affect the whole body. Too much poison oak can cause breathing problems. Too much exposure to a poison frog can kill you. Even the transdermal medications must be used with caution. For example, the cream Vanica seems to visually help reduce facial hair for women. However, the drug is not recommended for pregnant or nursing women because some of the medication enters the blood and the entire body. Men using testosterone cream must take special care not to get the cream on their female partners. The point is, no transdermal chemical can yet specifically target a hair follicle alone. All these substances are absorbed into the bloodstream. This photograph illustrates why no currently available product can specifically target the follicle. Here is the tissue in the follicle, which needs to be destroyed to render permanent hair removal. And there's the epidermis. As you can see, these tissues are exactly the same. The follicle is an indentation of the epidermis. The follicle is the epidermis. If a product was able to destroy the follicle, it would also destroy the epidermis and the skin. Likewise, if an enzyme or potion could dissolve the follicle, it would also dissolve the skin. I suppose you could put lye or hydrochloric acid on your skin and succeed in destroying the hair, but you would be removing your skin as well. What about those lovely internet alchemists who attest that their remedy actually works? Well, they are seeing something, but it's not permanent hair removal. Every electrologist knows that tiny hairs grow significantly slower than large terminal hairs. Naturally, if a woman shaves her tiny hairs, she won't see them for many weeks. If the tiny hairs are waxed out, they will take months to show up again. Therefore, if the alchemists are using their concoctions to pluck out minute hairs, they will see very few return, and it will take months for those hairs to show up again. So, they believe the remedy is effective. However, it is not. My final point. Again, if a cream could destroy the follicle, it would equally destroy the skin. There's no getting around it. By contrast, electrolysis creates an upside-down wound, and for that reason, electrolysis has endured and succeeded for a hundred years and counting. As you see in this drawing, the electrologist's needle produces a heating pattern that begins at the base of the hair follicle. Using specific techniques, the heating pattern climbs upward, with more intensity at the bottom than the top. It is in this way that your electrologist destroys the papilla and stem cells, but leaves the upper skin unharmed. Done properly, the safety and efficacy of modern electrolysis cannot be duplicated by any other process. So if you want permanent results, save your money, stop molesting your skin with worthless creams or home concoctions, seek out a skilled laser operator or an electrologist. Thanks for watching. Please leave a comment and subscribe.